Six years ago, on August 1, 2010, the University of Ghana began a new chapter in its history. The induction of a new Vice-Chancellor, the 11th in the history of Ghana's leading institution of higher learning. The new Vice-Chancellor, Professor Ernest Aite, a Professor of Economics prior to his appointment, was a Senior Fellow and Director of the Africa Growth Initiative at the Brookings Institution in Washington, D.C., and a former Director of the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research of the University of Ghana. The Council has a procedure for selecting Vice-Chancellors. There's a search party which makes uh, a short list and reports to Council. And uh, the search party was impressed by his, the vision that he articulated uh, for the university. And the quintessence of his vision was that he wanted to transform the university into a world-class university within 10 years. And council was struck by this vision and bought into it. And therefore, it was easy for council to make the decision to appoint him. Inducting him into office, the chairman of the University Council extolled his leadership qualities whilst charging him with a mandate to make the university a better place during his tenure. I wish to emphasize the fact that we had to snatch him back from the Brookings Institution in Washington. However, he's truly one of our own and has had an association with the University of Ghana since 1975 when he entered Legon to read economics with statistics. He's well acquainted with the problems and prospects of Legon. He's a Legon insider, but has had sufficient outside experience to enable him to have an external perspective as well. In his inaugural speech as Vice-Chancellor, he outlined his vision of transforming the University of Ghana into a world-class institution, highlighting research and graduate studies, internationalization, amongst others. There's no doubt that I'm a very excited man. I'm excited about the fact that I have the opportunity to manage what is probably the largest public institution in Ghana. I would like to thank the Council of the University for the confidence that has shown in me and the honor done me. I would also like to thank the search committee that recommended me for the position. In doing this, I'd like to assure them that they did not make any mistake in choosing me. And that I will work hard to prove it in the coming months and years. When I met the search committee, I saw to the members my idea of turning this university into a world-class university. The vision focused on the following priority areas. Promoting academic excellence through enhanced teaching and learning and leadership training. Promoting academic excellence through significantly expanded and relevant research and extension. Overhaul of governance arrangements in administration, teaching and research. Better management of the university assets and facilities. Scale up efforts towards equal opportunity in gender and diversity. Enhanced fundraising activities at unit and central administration levels. Mainstream and enforce structures and processes for monitoring and evaluation. Soon, as the years rolled on, the impact of his dedication and tenacity to service began to show as they yielded exciting results for the university community. The task of transforming the university into a world-class university was broken into subunits. Among them was promoting academic excellence, excellence in research and extension work, excellence in teaching and learning, transforming the infrastructure of the university, uh, overhauling and reforming the governance institutions of the university and so on. There were various elements in his vision which he has steadily been achieving in the, within the course of the six years that he's been in, in, in office. So the uh, council has been quite impressed uh, with his work in translating his vision into reality. Under his leadership, there have been significant improvements in the teaching and learning environments. 
For example, the restructuring of PhD programs, procurement of science equipment, introduction of new programs at both graduate and undergraduate levels, in addition to the creation of four centers of excellence to lead the process of transforming Lagon into a research-intensive institution. Other accomplishments include enhancing the university's physical image and status with respect to asset management, expansion of academic facilities, refurbishing university roads and pursuing beautification projects. Leading a participatory process of community engagement, a new strategic plan was launched during his tenure. With a renewed vision and mission and core values, the university set nine strategic priorities as areas of focus for the next 10 years. Research. Create a vibrant intellectual climate that stimulates relevant cutting-edge research and community engagement. Teaching and learning. Promote academic excellence using the highest international standard of learning, teaching and leadership development. Internal stakeholders. Provide an environment that will ensure fulfilling experiences for internal stakeholders. Gender and diversity. Create the best environment for equal opportunity in gender and diversity. Institutional processes. Overhaul all governance arrangements to achieve greater effectiveness and efficiency. Financial performance. Enhance the mobilization and management of resources at unit and central administration levels. Asset management. Strengthen the management of the university's assets and facilities. Monitoring and evaluation. Mainstream and enforce structures and processes for system-wide monitoring and evaluation. External stakeholders. Build stakeholder confidence in the capabilities of the university. Consolidating the efforts of its predecessors and the overall commitment of members of the university community with demonstrable backing of his colleagues, principal officers, chairman of the University Council and Chancellor Kofi Annan, the University of Ghana is today ranked seventh amongst best universities in Africa. His interest to see a vibrant community spirit ushered in the annual choral festival at Easter, the gardening competition, the annual service of nine lessons and carols, the vice chancellor's informal tea session at number 18 with special birthday cakes in the month of October and the end of year get together at the lodge, among many formal and informal official events. In all these, his visionary leadership was crystal clear. To honor the memory of his stewardship, several groups and associations within the university community extol the qualities that have made Professor Aite an exemplary leader worth celebrating. My relationship with Prof, uh, the first one was more of very antagonistic. Uh, when I, I came to Commonwealth Hall, the level 100 student was baptized into Bob vandalism. Uh, our main aim was activists to fight against injustice. So I remember one time he came to uh, come out in the morning and we challenged him and my colleagues. In fact, we literally exchanged very bad words. And after the program, we still followed him, shouting and saying that what he was doing was not the right thing because he had said that he wanted to decongest the halls. So that antagonism continued and we organized uh, a demonstration saying we're not going to agree. Uh, school fees and residential fees were very high. We fought him a lot. Then that year, I was going to contest for SRC president. And what we heard was that I was going to be taken off the race because I was very radical. And I, uh, the VC had actually given instruction to the Dean of Students and management of the university to make sure that I didn't participate in the SRC election. And that was one of the things that we were using. But I went to the vetting. I qualified. I got elected. Um, we went to greet him. He received us very well. So when he received us very well that day, I like, uh, is it what we've been hearing? Is it the...
Council writes, As Vice-Chancellor, your tenure has seen sweeping changes in the governance of the university, alongside several infrastructural developments and growth of the institution as a whole. You had a vision to transform Legon into a world-class research-intensive university which would rank among the top 10 universities in Africa. Building on the work of your predecessors, you exhibited a tenacity of purpose by marshalling the collective efforts of human resources available within the university to ensure an impressive seventh place ranking of our university in Africa. Today, you exit with the corporate image of the University of Ghana having soared to an all-time high. You have been at the helm of affairs and steered the mandate of the university in the last six years. We know in retirement as well, you will hold aloft the interest of the university, which will have a positive impact on Gawa. We wish you well as you take your bow. Fusag, UG Legon says, We hold in our thoughts your immense achievements as a distinguished scholar and a great leader of the University of Ghana. Through the mantra of world-class research-intensive university, you have driven University of Ghana into prominence in the higher education landscape in Ghana, Africa, and worldwide. We appreciate your untiring efforts towards the development of the university. We pray that God in his infinite mercies go with you and take you to a new level that is greater and higher than Lagon. Fusag wishes you well. Tewu also adds his voice to the commendation. During your tenure of office, you chaired the Vice-Chancellor's Ghana and led Tewu in all the public universities to appear at the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission to settle disparities of the single-spine salary structure successfully. As Vice-Chancellor, you maintained the end-of-year package for unionized members throughout your tenure, and we are grateful. As you come to the end of your tenure, we say Ayuko for your immense contribution to the affairs of the Union and contributing to the peace and tranquility on our campus. Uh, Professor Enes Ayite uh, is an achiever. Uh, he's a very disciplined person. Uh, he's a go-getter. He gets things done. He's a bit friendly, but he's also quite authoritative. When you have a leader who is always ready and available, to go along with your proposals, to go along with the work that you're doing, which is helping the investor, then you know that he really is somebody that you can always fall on. Professor Enes Ayite, I thank God I had the opportunity to interact with you at the highest level. You've proven a lot of your critics wrong. You've done your best and served the university at the best of your ability. I know that uh, the universe will conspire to reward you for the good things that you've done and your name Will forever be etched in the history of the University of Ghana and all the students that your actions and policies have touched positively. We've had a very cordial working relationship with him and he has always been there. As a matter of fact, we call him the DC of the University. We think that his performance has been outstanding. He's been a stellar Vice Chancellor. Professor Ernest Taite, I wish you all the best. The alumni will miss you. The university community will miss you. But that is life. You've played your role, and it's time for you to bow out. Take a bow, and we'll give you a standing ovation. As Vice Chancellor Aite takes a bow, after six years as Chief Executive Officer of the Premier University, what more can we say? Well done. Aiko, yes, you had big dreams, and you worked hard to fulfill them. The result is a remarkable legacy for successive generations to continue from where you left off. From milestones and accomplishments, to progress and pursuing the path of integrity, from challenges to setbacks, to moving ahead and successful outcomes, you stood tall with an avowed loyalty to the university and commitment to the ideals of the forebears. Academic freedom, the hallmark of any institution of higher learning, but certainly not without more loss of hair, yet you gained a bigger dose of patience and tolerance, ingredients you will need on your journey as a senior citizen. Through all these, your leadership gave us the wings to soar. We salute you. Arise, arise, O Legon. Defend the course of freedom. Proceed in truth and integrity to make our nation proud.